1901. Hopefully um, you were able to either join us or watch our Raptors 101 session. If not, that is a-okay. Um, we're going to take it pretty easy this morning, so um, we're going to dive into the world of Raptors and, and get a little bit um, a few more tips and tricks on how to ID these birds out in the field. So um, you all are probably Zoom professionals by now, but just in case, um, we wanna make sure, like I said, everyone's video is off, your sound, um, or you are muted so that you can hear me. Um, that just helps our technology run a, a little bit smoother. So you can see in the bottom here, the bottom left, the mute and the camera, you wanna make sure there's a red line through both of those. Um, and then if you have questions, and we hope that you do, we love answering questions, we are going to use the, uh, utilize the chat box for that. So in the middle circle I have there, um, that is our chat icon, you could click on that. And then make sure that it's going to everyone. So you can message people privately, um, but make sure it's going to everyone so that we can all see what lovely questions you have. Um, so let's practice that right now. If I could have everyone type in the chat box where you're from, how many people are watching with you today, and um, the last really cool bird that you saw. And while you're doing that, we'll introduce ourselves. So my name is Sarah Doxon. I'm an environmental educator with Bird Conservancy of the Rockies. And in the chat box helping me out today, we have Stacy Monahan. She's our Camps and Family Programs Coordinator. My favorite bird today, my favorite raptor today is an American kestrel. You can see that pictured up top. Um, they are small but fierce and I just, love them so much. They're amazing birds. And Stacy's favorite raptor today is the majestic golden eagle. So a little bit about bird conservancy, just in case this is your first experience with us. Uh, we are a nonprofit conservation organization and our mission is to help conserve birds and their habitats. And we do that through um, kind of like a multi-pronged approach. So we have our science team. They are the ones um, out in the field doing that boots on the ground research, doing bird banding, monitoring populations, things like that, so we can know how the birds are doing. Then we have our stewardship team. They are working with private landowners, such as farmers and ranchers, and what they do is they collaborate with them um, to help them implement conservation practices on their land that not only is going to benefit the environment, but also their business as well. And then last but certainly not least, we have us, the education team. So it's our job to help people learn how cool birds are to kind of ignite that passion in them and help them to learn what things they can do to help birds. And we are um, headquartered here at Bar Lake State Park in Brighton, Colorado. We also have a satellite office in Fort Collins, but we do work all throughout the Rocky Mountain region and down into Mexico as well. So again, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and share in the chat box where you're watching from, how many people are watching with you, and what your favorite bird is today. And just a note too, we are recording the webinar and we'll send a link out to the recording after we're done. And it will also be posted to our YouTube channel. So if you are a note taker and that's how you learn best, absolutely feel free to take notes, um, but don't feel like you need to rush and be stressed um, writing everything down because you will get these slides and the recording um, in just a few days. So in this webinar, we are going to do just kind of a brief overview of the characteristics of raptors, what makes a raptor a raptor. And then the main thing that we're going to do today, of course, is learn how to identify some common raptors. Uh, I know there are some of you that are watching from out of state, which is awesome. We never thought we would reach people out of the state of Colorado. Um, so I will say with a caveat, we're going to focus on raptors that are more common in the front range of Colorado. That being said, raptors are widespread and they do migrate. So whatever we talk about here today, it's likely that you'll see those in your area. And if not, it at least gives you a really good place to start when looking um, and becoming more familiar with these birds of prey that live where you live. 
Okay, so characteristics, what makes a raptor a raptor? Are we talking about a dinosaur, a velociraptor, like in Jurassic Park? What are we talking about when we meet, when we say raptor? So go ahead, type in the chat box, what characteristics you think makes a raptor a raptor? It makes it different uh, maybe from other birds. Predators, talons, nice. Binocular vision. Carnivore, absolute. Oh, you guys are on it this morning. I love it. So, yes, all of those things. So, they have binocular vision. They have a strong hooked beak, strong talons. They're carnivores or insectivores. And most of them are sexually dimorphic, meaning that the males and the females are different, um, but not in the way that a lot of times we think. So a lot of times we think that males and females look different in their coloration. With raptors, many times they look very similar, but the females are actually a bit larger. And then if you're wondering what kinds of birds make up raptors, um, the, they're divided into these different families or groups. So we have our owls, our hawks, and our vultures, which that includes um, eagles as well. And then we have falcons and caracaras. Um, so today we are just really going to be focusing on hawks, vultures, and falcons. Um, and we're hoping, we've had a lot of interest in owls, so we're hoping to do an owl-specific webinar very soon. So don't fret if you were li really looking forward to owls, we'll get to them. Um, but they're so fascinating, we thought they deserved their, their own webinar. And I'm going to show this graphic, um, the, the graphic that's on the slide here a couple times throughout the, the uh, webinar because it's it's super super helpful when we're looking at birds and learning how to identify birds it can be really easy to get caught up in the coloration and the patterns of their plumages which is really important to look at but because they differ so much they can differ so much from males to females or juveniles to adults or regional differences um, the most basic thing that we want to look at is simply the silhouette or the outline of these birds. You can see all of these birds are considered raptors, but their silhouette is quite different. So it goes from this really broad, long-winged eagle down to the falcons, with ha which have these kind of sharp, pointy wings, a smaller head, and longer tail. And so we'll dive more into that um, and the differences and why they're important uh, throughout, throughout the slides here. All right, so we're gonna go from smallest to largest. So we are gonna start with our falcons. So some things that um, make falcons different from other birds or how we know a bird could be in the falcon family is that they are incredibly fast. They have narrow pointed wings and a long tail. And that is what helps them to be so agile and so fast is that wing shape and tail. They can cut tight corners and swoop and dive and do all sorts of really um, acrobatic moves. Another, a couple really cool adaptations they have is this thing called a tomial tooth. So in the picture here, you can see there, it looks almost like a groove or a tooth um, on the top of this bird's beak. So that's a tomial tooth. And what that is used for is to actually snap the vertebrae of their prey. Um, so no other birds, I don't believe, no other birds have this. A lot of birds um, like hawks or osprey that we'll talk about later, they capture their prey with their talons, but falcons capture their prey usually with, um, with their beak. So they need this tomial tooth to kind of um, kill their prey. And then if you look in the nostril of this bird, it kind of maybe looks like he has a booger in there, but that is a special structure called a tubercle. And you can imagine if you are a falcon, if you're especially a peregrine falcon, which they've been clocked at over 
200 miles per hour when they're diving through the air. That's a lot of air that's flowing through your nostrils. Um, and that can make it, if you've ever been skydiving, you know, that can make it really hard to breathe. Um, so what that structure, that tubercle does is help to slow down the air as it's coming in their nostril. And it actually makes it go in a spiral pattern so that they can still breathe and there's no damage to their respiratory system. So that's, those are a couple of pretty fascinating uh, adaptations that falcons have. So kind of how this is going to work today, we're just going to go through and I'm going to go through slide by slide through the species and point out some of the most distinctive field marks and we'll have some quizzes throughout so that we can practice. And again, I just challenge you when we're done to get out your field guide. If you don't have it now, it would be um, a handy thing to have while we go along so you can follow along too. But it, it really is just a lot of practice and repetition. So here, here's a good place to start though. So we're gonna start with our peregrine falcon, probably one of the most well-known charismatic falcons because of their um, really dramatic comeback after DDT was banned and they their numbers suffered quite a bit. Um, and they are pretty are becoming really well adapted um, to live in cities as well. So people are are seeing them more and more often. So a couple of of outstanding field marks. So one of the things is they look like they have a helmet or like these sideburns. So they have a really dark helmet or sideburns. Um, and then when they're flying, things to look for they have really powerful wing beats. So that's another. Thing to look for besides the shape or the silhouette of a wing is how they're using their wing. Are they flapping constantly? Are they doing a couple of flaps and then gliding? Are they mostly soaring? Those can be really good behavioral characteristics to look for. And then of course most raptors when we see them we are seeing them from underneath. So a lot of birds, we just focus on what they look like when they're perched, but for raptors, it can be super, super helpful to focus um, and pay attention to what they look like from when we're looking up at them. So for uh, peregrine falcons, you can just see they're really, really finely barred. They've got a lot of patterning, patterning underneath, um, except for this kind of plain white collar that they have. What does a powerful wing beat mean? Very good question. <laughs> so some birds, went, and this again, just it kind of comes with watching birds and noticing the differences. Um, some birds look like it, it's just like really easy. They're really graceful. They're just kind of laissez-faire fair flying along in the sky. Whereas something like a falcon, you can tell they mean business. So that's what I mean by a powerful wing beat because they're flapping hard and um, really trying to get to where they're going. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but I encourage you to, if you can't get outside and watch real birds, to look at some videos online and you can see those differences. Good question. All right, next we have our prairie falcon. So you can see they do look similar, but these guys are more of a light brown color instead of that almost slate gray of the peregrine falcon. And they have not so much a helmet, but they do have this kind of mustache. Um, we call that a malar stripe. And then if you look underneath, they have their really kind of defining characteristic in, in flight are these dark wing pits. So if you think of a bird having arms like we do, this might be where their armpit would be. So that's their wing pit. They have these dark um, areas there. Then they're pretty heavily streaked um, and pretty finely barred, just like the peregrine fal falcon as well. And so I mentioned this earlier, juvenile, especially in raptor, well, a lot of birds, but especially in raptors, um, the difference between juveniles and adults can be fairly significant. So we're not going to go into that too much. I'm going to try to mention it for at least a few birds throughout, but just keep in mind that that is another factor um, that we that we keep in mind. So for example, this bird that's on the bottom, the picture that's on the bottom is probably a juvenile because it is quite streaked on the chest. Um, whereas adults are going to have more, they're going to be more spotted um, on their chest. 
All right, so we've got our peregrine, we've got our prairie falcon. Um, and we can see prairie falcons pretty much year round in Colorado and during the winter um, more east of the mountains. They'll be down here a little bit more often. Okay, next we have a merlin. This is a really cool bird. Um, so they are bigger than a kestrel, which we'll, we'll talk about next. The kestrel is the smallest of the falcons. Um, so they're a bit bigger than a kestrel, but smaller than a prairie and a peregrine falcon. Um, and again, here, the males and females do look different. So this one on the bottom left, that is a female. So she's more brown, kind of that sandy brown color. And then the males, which is on the right hand side, they're more of that slate um, and gray color. And a couple of um, differences to notice in the prairie and the peregrine falcon, they had a really pronounced, um, what I called a mustache or a sideburn. So the merlin doesn't really have that, it's pretty weak. And then another difference is this white eye line that they have. Again, with the other birds, they're really heavily patterned underneath, but you can tell with the merlin, it's more um, like the, the streaks look heavier, whereas on the peregrine and the prairie falcon, they're a lot more finely barred. And then if we look at the tail here, you can see it's barred as well. So it's mostly dark, but it's got these thin white stripes. All right, and our last falcon we're going to talk about today is our kestrel. So these are probably the most common falcon that you'll see. They're, they're very common around here. Their numbers have been slipping a bit and you can actually put up a nest box for kestrels if you live in the right areas and that can help them out. Um, but they are just beautiful birds. Like I said, they are small but feisty and that is why I love them so much. Uh, they, so some things to look for both behaviorally and um, visually, so they actually have two of these stripes going down their face. And again, the uh, female is on the left on the bottom side, the male is on the right. So the female uh, on the back side is all brown and she has more, it's more barred right, more stripy on her back, while the male has this beautiful slate gray wing in addition to that kind of rusty red color, and he's going to be more spotted than streaked. Um, and let's see, the two vertical eye stripes, and there's a reason that these birds have those stripes, those malar stripes or, or stripes that are below their eye. It's just like when a football player or any sports player puts those black streaks beneath their eye, is to help absorb the sunlight. Birds, I've never seen a bird wear sunglasses, although that would be pretty entertaining. Um, but because they can't wear sunglasses, they need a way to keep the sun out of their eyes. So a lot of times these raptors will have a pretty pronounced brow bone to help shield them from the sun. And then they'll have those black, some sort of black patterning under their eye as well to help them with the sun. Something behaviorally to look for uh, with a kestrel. So if you see a pretty small bird, they're about the size of a morning dove. If you see that sitting on a fence post or a power line and they are bobbing their tail up and down, that's a really classic um, behavioral thing for a kestrel. Another thing is that they tend to hover. So a lot of times we might be familiar with raptors that are you know, like a red-tailed hawk that is soaring around in the sky looking for its food. Um, kestrels tend to actually hover and they'll flap their wings really, really quickly. Um, they like to face into the wind as well um, to help them hover in place while they're looking for prey. And then again, just like the other um, falcons, they are pretty heavily patterned on their wings, but their tail is that really um, kind of rusty color and then it has a pretty dark band on the end. Okay. So those are our falcons. That's our first group. We got our brains working for the morning. Uh, the next slide is going to be a quiz and there are going to be six pictures uh, labeled one through six. So go ahead and um, start thinking about it. You can type in the chat box what you think. If you know right away, maybe give us a few minutes to um, help the other people have some time to look through their field, but 
field guide or make some guesses. Um, so if you're a person that really doesn't want it spoiled for you, you can hide the chat box really quick um, while we do this. And of course, if anyone has any questions, enter those in the chat box. So here is our quiz and that will be, those will be the Falcons, one through six. All right, see some answers coming in. Nice job. And remember, if you have no idea at all, that is okay. Just type in your best guess, because if you're guessing, you're thinking, and that's getting your wheels turning, and it's going to help things stick better in your mind. And if birding isn't anything, it's repetition. Repeating, repeating um, is what's going to help you lock in these, these IDs. All right. Nice work. All right, I see lots of answers coming in. I'm going to go ahead and reveal the answers here. So number one is an American kestrel. An American kestrel. Number two is the prairie falcon. So it's got those wing pits, remember, the dark wing pits. Number three is the peregrine falcon. So it's got that helmet. Sometimes they look like, so this one looks like it has um, a mustache. Sometimes they have a solid helmet as well. Um, so it's got that really dark head, the plain collar, and then streaky rest of its body. Number four is our Merlin. So that Merlin has the white eye stripe on top, really no um, malar or mustache. And this is a male because it is that slate gray color and the, the females are more brown. Number five is our prairie falcon. So again, it has a white, uh, a white eyebrow. It's got that brown mustache, bit of a streaky chest. And then the last one is the female American kestrel. So I'll go through them one more time. Number one is um, an American kestrel. Number two, the prairie falcon. Number three is the peregrine falcon. Four is the merlin. Five is uh, the prairie falcon again. And six is the female American kestrel. All right, good work. And Stacy or Tyler, do we have any questions so far? Okay, we're gonna keep on going. So those are our falcons getting a little bit bigger in the raptor family, we are going to go to hawks. So how can we tell the difference between a hawk and a falcon. So um, a, hawks are bigger. They have a different wing shape. We're going to talk about that in the next slide. They don't have that tomial tooth, that groove in their beak, um, because they are hunting. When they're hunting, they're usually grabbing things with their talons instead of with their beak. And then we can break down ha hawks down into two even smaller groups, the occipiters and the budos. So we'll go over that right now. So again, we have this graphic here that shows the silhouettes. If you look at um, the second from the bottom, the occipiter, so you'll notice that they, their wings are quite a bit shorter than the budio, which is above it, and they're more rounded. They also have a longer tail, and this helps them to be really agile flyers as well. So the occipiters that we have in Colorado are our sharp shinned hawk, our Cooper's hawk, and a northern goshawk. Everything else that's a hawk falls pretty much follows into this uh, budio category. So their wing. So if you think about a red-tailed hawk, it's 
probably the hawk that everyone knows. They have these nice broad wings. Their tails are a bit shorter. And as far as flying, they are soars, right? They're going to ride those thermals up high in the sky, whereas exhibitors um, are more fast, agile flyers. So we're going to start with our exhibitors. And here's our sharp shinned hawk. So um, again, on the bottom, on the left is the female, and on the right is the male. They are pretty heavily patterned. Oh, excuse me, the, the one on the left is the juvenile and the one on the right is the, um, is the adult. So in this one, juveniles start off uh, brown and really streaky, and you'll notice they have vertical stripes on their chest. And if you take a look at the adult, those stripes have not only changed color, but they have changed direction. So now they are this kind of reddish rusty color and they are horizontal across their chest, which is really interesting. You'll also notice that these birds have incredibly long legs. Look at how long those are. And that's again because the, um, most of the time exhibitors are bird eating birds. So they are chasing after other birds. So they need kind of those long legs to be able to reach out and grab their prey. So in flight, you can see, um, if you remember back to our, the silhouettes, look at these, these rounded wings. They're pretty short, close to the body. And then this long tail, which is going to act like a rudder and help it to turn. And sharps and hawks, they're um, mostly forest dwellers. So if you think about it, they're in these dense forests. They are flying really quickly to try to catch other birds that are in flight. Um, so they need to be really, really agile. So that tail acts like a rudder and these wings can tuck in and help them to turn really quickly. Um, you can see these in Colorado year round, but again, and they, they can be in, um, in suburban and urban areas, but you're more likely to see their larger cousin, the Cooper's Hawk, and we'll get to that one next. Um, and you might have heard um, people who are trying to identify, is it a sharp shin or is it a Cooper's Hawk? They are very hard to tell apart. Um, and and I, I will admit, I have a, a really hard time telling them apart. And that's why we practice. So there are a couple of things that you can look for when you're trying to tell the difference between a Cooper's Hawk and a Sharp Shin. But just keep in mind that, again, just with everything, there is a gradient, right? There's a gradient in size, there's a gradient in colors and patterning. Um, so just be kind to yourself and have fun with it. But um, I'll let you know a few things to keep in mind. So if you look at this top picture of the sharp shin talk, you can kind of tell that its head is doesn't extend beyond its wings, right? So its wings, like where its wrists would be, its head is kind of tucked in into its wings, right? Whereas a Cooper's hawk, its head is going to be a, a bit larger and stick out a bit further. And we'll see that in the next slide. Another thing to look for um, is if you look at this adult on the bottom right, they have this black cap. In sharp shinned hawks, it tends to kind of just fade from, um, from gray down to this reddish color. And in Cooper's hawks, it tends to be a bit more pronounced. Again, that like is a very um, subjective thing, but it is something to look for. One other thing is their tail shape. So you'll notice on this sharp shin, the top one that's flying, its tail is fairly squared off. So remember, sharp shin, S, uh, sharp starts with S, square starts with S. So its tail is squared off. So let's take a look at their bigger cousin here, the Cooper's hawk. So you can see they look just about identical. Um, and on the bottom here, you can see the difference. So the right one is the sharp shin. The left one is the Cooper's Hawk. So, and in pictures, it's really, really hard to judge size. So we won't focus on that, but you can see how the Cooper's Hawk on the left-hand side, its head is, and it's almost more pointed as well. And there's a stronger, kind of a stronger, um, border between the, the cap and the rest of its face. And then if you look um, either at this Cooper's Hawk that's perched or the one in the sky, their tails tend to be a bit more rounded. So C is a rounded shape, right? And their tail is rounded like the letter C. Um, so there's 
that, more rounded tail. Oh, and their head, look at how this one's head kind of extends a bit beyond its wrist there. So again, these are, <laughs> these are really small details that can be very difficult to see in the field, but um, with enough time and enough practice, I have faith that you will be able to tell the difference between a Cooper's and a Sharpshin. And again, Coopers are, are more likely to be in urban and suburban areas, um, especially if you have bird feeders. They do tend to uh, hang around there to get an easy meal. So there's our Coopers and our Sharpshin hawks. And then the last exhibitor we're going to talk about today is our goshawk. So if you have um, ever been lucky enough to see a goshawk, you know how incredible they are. They're gorgeous, gorgeous birds. They are mountain dwellers, so um, you'll have to go hiking a bit probably to find these, these birds. But when they are perched, they're this slate gray again above. We're seeing that color a lot in these birds. Um, and their chest is is barred but really really fine it almost looks like really thin pencil marks um, going across its chest and then they have a pretty pronounced white eyebrow as well and check out that eye their eyes are red in flight um, they are they're larger than a cooper's hawk and let's see if we go back a slide here and look at the stripes on the cooper's hawk's tail you can see um, the stripes are fairly thick, especially those white stripes. And if we look at the goshawk, I know it might be a bit hard to see on this picture, um, its stripes are a bit thinner, if that makes sense. And again, their, their habitat probably isn't going to overlap a whole lot. Um, Cooper's hawks like a, a bit more open areas than goshawks do. Okay, so those are our exhibitors, our goshawk, our Cooper's hawk, and our sharp shin hawks, long tailed, short rounded wings, really, really acrobatic, agile flyers. Yeah, has anyone ever seen a goshawk? I've seen one once and it was the coolest thing. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> well, when it's safe to do so, you should go hiking and, and try to find a goshawk. They're really cool. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our bootios, so our kind of classic hawks that we think of. And of course, oops, there we go. We're going to start off with the classic red tailed hawk. If you have seen a hawk, no matter where you are in the United States, it's very, very likely that it was this, this charismatic fellow. Um, and even though they're quite common, they are really gorgeous birds. And interesting, they, they have several morphs. And the ones I have pictured are the most common, this lighter morph. But there, there are others. There's a dark morph. Um, there's a Harlan's hawk that actually doesn't have the classic red tail. It's more um, like mottled gray and brown. It's really interesting. Um, they, yeah, there's a dark morph that's really like chocolatey brown. It's really cool. Um, you know, just to add a little bit more fun when you're trying to uh, tell all of these raptors apart, let's throw in some morphs. So, okay, the red-tailed hawk. When we see it perched, um, one of the really kind of telltale signs is this uh, kind of rusty colored streaking on the chest fading into this spotted belly band. And then, of course, in flight, that classic rusty brown tail, which you can't always see. Um, and sometimes when you're looking from underneath, if the sun isn't shining just right, it might just look kind of white or like a pinkish color. Um, but that, of course, is where they get their name from, the red tail. And then you can see that belly band. And then they have these little commas. So again, kind of where its wrist would be, they have these black commas. And then the one that's pictured on the left is a juvenile. So you can see it looks completely different, right? But if you take a look at the overall shape, you will see it does look very similar. So these long, broad wings and this pretty broad tail, kind of medium length tail. Um, so juvenile red-tailed hawks are very, very boldly patterned. So they got this, this striping on their flight feathers and tail and um, really, really mo modeled on, 
on the body and, and the rest of the wings. Oh, yes, thank you, Karen, the patagial marks, thank you. So if we go to the bird that's on the right here, the patagium, where you can see is kind of this reddish stripe, that's another one. Another good field mark for red-tailed hawks. All right, next, now that it is summer, you have probably seen a few of these hawks flying around. Um, and they're, they're one of my favorite. They're really, really cool birds. So this is a Swainson hawk. Um, and again, they, have, they also have a dark morph. It's quite a bit less common, but they still do occur. Um, so a couple of really good field marks for telling a Swainson's hawk is this bib or hood. So their whole head, except for kind of their throat here, is this nice chocolatey brown color. It looks like they're wearing a bib. Um, and then in flight, you can see their wings are actually pretty narrow. So I'm going to go back to our red-tailed hawk, and you can see how, how broad they are, how wide they are. And the Swainsons are fairly narrow, um, especially going towards the tip. And they, they're pretty unmistakable when you're looking up at them from underneath. So they're fairly pale. Um, most of the under, underneath side of them is pale, but then they're uh, the trailing edge, their flight feathers behind them are quite dark. So that contrast is really, really evident even when they're flying really high up in the sky. So those are things to look for for our Swainsons, that bib or hood and the really dark contrast, dark and light contrast in their wings. Next is our ferruginous hawk. And um, they get their name from the reddish, reddish, <laughs> reddish, rusty red color that they have on them. So ferrous, just like, like iron, um, and iron kind of has that reddish color. So their backs um, are that color. They're, they're pretty mottled, um, kind of some variation in the feathers along their back. They're really big. So they're even bigger than a red-tailed hawk. And then another really interesting thing that you might not be able to see um, unless you have a pair of binoculars is that their feathers actually all go all the way down their legs to their toes. And that's not super common um, at all really in raptors except for maybe owls. But um, as far as raptors outside of owls that have these um, feathered legs, so the ferruginous hawk, the rough-legged hawk, and the golden eagle, and we'll talk about those two in a bit. But just know that if it has feathers going all the way down its legs, it's probably one of those three. And then if you look from underneath, they are just, they're really, really pale birds. So if you see a bird up in the sky that looks like a, a hawk and it's really, really pale, chances are it's a ferruginous hawk and you can see its legs tucked here so its legs have um again that those are the feathers and they're kind of striped with that reddish color and they also have a really big head so you can kind of see the the picture of it in flight doesn't really show it well but the picture of it perched you can see how how large their head is and this one is a good um a good example of that really prominent brow bone as well so that helps to shade their eyes from the sun. Uh, they also have pretty dark wingtips. So the Swainson's hawk, they had a pretty thick uh, outline of black around the trailing edge of their wings, whereas the ferruginous, they just have kind of this light, uh, or not light, but uh, thin, dark outline. Okay, is everyone still with me? This is a lot of information. We're doing good. Okay, next is our rough-legged hawk, and this is going to be our last one for the Budios, and then we'll kind of go back through them. So rough-legged hawks, they, they're really modeled. Look how patterned they are. So if you think of like going back to the Swainsons or the red-tailed hawk, those are pretty smooth colored, right? They're pretty uniformly brown. Um, but the rough-legged hawks tend to be a lot more mottled. And again, you can see its feathers going all the way down to its toes. So that's kind of a, a distinctive characteristic of, of these birds. 
when we are looking at them in flight, their kind of telltale sign are these dark wrist patches. So on both of the bottom pictures here, even though they look slightly different, you can tell that there's a pretty extensive uh, dark patch along kind of that bend in their wing where we might call it their wrist. They also have a belly band and you might remember that the uh, red-tailed hawk has the belly band too, but the rough-legged hawks, it's going to be a lot more pronounced. And again, so if you see a hawk and you think, well, gosh, it has that belly band, is it a red-tailed hawk? Just remember to look at its tail. So this one, its tail is all white, but it's got um, black, a black terminal band. So black band at the end of its tail where the red tail most likely is gonna have a red tail without much patterning, unless it's a juvenile, of course. <laughs> So these are rough-legged hawks. And let's see, so the top one is an adult male. The bottom left is actually an immature, an immature rough-legged hawk. So it's got uh, more streaks on the chest and a darker belly band. And then the one on the right is an adult male as well. A belly wrap, I like that. Yeah, so a red-legged hawk, or red-legged, rough-legged hawk has more of a belly wrap than a band. That's a good distinction. All right, so those are our bootios. We'll go back through them just to kind of refresh. Oops. Okay, so we have our red-tailed hawk, our classic hawk soaring in the sky. Our Swainson's hawk, they are our summer visitors. So they migrate down to South America. So you're going to see them only during the summer. That's another really important thing when we're identifying any birds is to know, um, know their ranges. So if you see a bird and you think it's a Swainson's hawk, but it's the middle of December, either that bird is very lost or you might need to flip through your field guide a little bit more. Our ferruginous hawk, they're really, it's really, really big, really pale. Feathers go all the way down its toes and our rough-legged hawk, which is just really kind of spotty colored and it's got that belly wrap and the dark wing spots on its wing. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? Are we all just kind of taking it in? I know this is a lot of information. And Stacy and Tyler, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat box, but just let me know if I miss anything. Okay, we're gonna keep on trucking then. So what group, oh good, what group are ospreys in? I'm glad you asked that. We are going to get to that in just a few minutes. Okay, so eagles, this is a small group. There's only two of them in there. Um, so of course, our bald eagle. Uh, these are, are pretty distinctive, right? If you see a really large dark bird with a white head and tail, it is definitely a bald eagle. But where it becomes a bit trickier is when they are not an adult. And it actually takes bald eagles four to five years to get to this kind of classic plumage that we think of when we think of bald eagles. Until that time, they're going to look uh, some variation of the bird that's in the top picture there. So bald eagles, until they're four or five, when they're juveniles or subadults, they are going to be some variation of mottled uh, brown and white. And the older that they get, the closer they get to that four or five years, the, the more white they'll have on their head and their tail. So you could see a bald eagle that is all brown on its body, and it's got a white head, but it almost looks like it has brown highlights or brown wash to it. That means maybe it's a third year bird and next in the next couple years it will have an all white head and tail. So that's where sometimes people can get tripped up when they see a juvenile bald eagle and they think it's some sort of hawk um, because it's not that classic plumage. But eagles are, um, are quite a bit bigger than hawks. They tend to hold their wings out really straight and flat like a board. Um, whereas hawks sometimes hold their wings up a bit, um, kind of like going a, like a, in a V almost. 
Okay, and the other one we have is, of course, our golden eagle. Um, they are a lot more secretive. They uh, we don't see them quite as often, or at least I don't see them quite as often. Um, they nest in, in the mountains and on cliffs, and they are not um, as okay with people as, as bald eagles are. So they, at first glance, might look like a juvenile bald eagle, but um, that one we can see on top, they have on the nape, on the back of their neck, they have kind of this golden sheen, which isn't always visible, but you, if you catch it in the right light, that's a telltale sign. Um, and then from the bottom here, they are fairly uniformly brown, but then they have lighter um, outer, these flight feathers on the outer side. And if we go back to our bald eagle, you can see that the juvenile, it's just mottled all over, right? It's kind of spotty and splotchy all over. Uh, underneath for the juvenile, and then the golden eagle has more uniform, um, lighter on its on its flight feathers. Okay, others. Now we're going to go in the others category, and that's where our osprey fits in. So we have a, a nesting pair of osprey here at Bar Lake, which is so cool to watch. They are pretty much exclusively fish eating birds. So if you are around a body of water, um, you have a chance to see an osprey and they tend to nest on platforms. They really easily take to man-made platforms or to um, like electrical towers, things like that. So they're fairly distinctive as well. At first glance, they might kind of look like an eagle, but they're a lot um, slimmer, I guess, and they do have that white head, but they have that brown stripe going through their eye and continuing down the neck and fading into the rest of the body. And then when they're in flight, they tend to hold their wings in kind of this M shape. So their wings are bent back um, and they are excellent and very fast divers as well. So they can actually dive into the water to, to catch their fish prey. Um, and then they have those dark pa patches on their alula, on their wrist as well. Um, and just something kind of fun about osprey. So they're generally their toe pattern. They have three in the front and one in the back. But they can actually rotate one of their front toes to go to the back so they can grip things two in front, two in back. And that helps them to be able to hold their fish parallel to their body and that decreases the wind resistance. So it's easier for them, they can save some energy as they're flying back to their perch to eat it. So that's our osprey. They're kind of in a bit in their own category. Another one kind of in their own category is the Northern Harrier. And these birds are super, super cool. Um, it looks like some weird combination of an owl and a hawk. So they have a very owl-like face. Um, and there's a reason for that. So owls have that kind of disc-like face and the feathers around their face, they can control to act like a satellite dish and help them to hear their prey better. So uh, um, Northern Harriers can do that same thing. The males and the females actually look quite a bit different. So the one in the top picture and in the bottom left, those are both females, so they're brown, and males are this light gray color. And probably the biggest giveaway for a Northern Harrier when you see it is that it is gliding low to the ground and it's got this white rump patch. So even if you see a bird and it just, you know, it's gliding along and you lose it, it goes, you know, down a hill or something. If you saw a white patch on its rump, it's most likely a Northern Harrier. And then the last one in kind of this other category is our turkey vulture. They're amazing. You know, you, they have the disgusting factor, but they're like so ugly, they're cute, and they have just amazing adaptations, and they're, they're quite funny and have, um, a lot of character. So they're unmistakable, right, with that bright red bald head, right, they are actually bald, unlike bald eagles who have feathers on their head. Um, and they are all over brown, or they can even look black. And in, in flight, they're pretty unmistakable as well. So these birds, they hold their wings up in a really deep V, we call that a dihedral. 
they hold it up in a deep V and then they look really wobbly, right? They look like a toddler that's just learning how to walk. They're kind of teetering in the sky. So at first glance, right, it could be easy to see, well, gosh, that's a really big bird and it's dark, but it's got light outer feathers. That is kind of like what the golden eagle looks like from underneath. But if they are, again, you have to look at the behavior and the flight pattern. And of course, if you can see that redhead, that is a dead giveaway as well. Okay, so gosh, that was a lot. And we are coming up on an hour here. And I do have one last quiz for us. Um, but I do want to make sure that I answer any questions that you have. So let's take a minute to kind of just digest all of this information. And I'm going to go back through and I'll just be kind of silent so you all can keep your own wheels turning. And then we'll take our last quiz and we'll answer any questions. Yes, this will be available as a PDF. Thank you for asking. I'm going fast, but I'll go slower when I'm going back through. Okay, here is the start. So I'll just kind of slowly click through these so you can get them in your brain. Okay, are you ready for the final test? There's only six. <laughs> so, and hopefully uh, that, that you can see the pictures easily enough to get the field guides. And again, just take your best guess. So it'll be like the one we did at the beginning, numbers one through six. Um, and you can start typing in the chat box if you want. If you do, if you know your IDs right away, maybe wait a few minutes and let the people who are newer um, get their guesses in first. Okay, here we go.
All right, here's some answers coming in. Nice job. Remember to look, you know, don't get caught up too much in the coloration and the patterns. Those are helpful, but the first thing I always try to look at is the silhouette, just that base outline of the bird. Does that have broad wings? Are its wings pointed? Does it have a long or a short tail? Nice. <laughs> the <outline. laughs> You remember the pictures, but not the names. Hey, that is the first step. That is the first step. I know for me, so when I was in college, I took an ornithology class and that was my first introduction to birding. And I got really into it and then I kind of fell out of it for a couple of years. And now that I'm getting back into birding, it's like I have these pictures or like random associations in the very far reaches of my brain. So that is a is truly a good start, right? We're starting to form those associations and eventually you will put the name and the picture together and you'll be a birding expert in no time. Okay, here are the answers. Number one, is the Northern Harrier or the Owl Hawk, <laughs> someone called it. And this one is gray, so it is a male. So the males are that light gray color. And look, there's that white rump patch that is the dead giveaway that it's a, a Northern Harrier. Number two is a, let's see, is a juvenile bald eagle. So it's pretty, um, modeled all around. Number three is the, is the rough-legged hawk. So remember it's got those patches, it's got the belly band. Number four is that ferruginous hawk. So again, that Ferrug ferrous is like iron or rust, so it's really rusty colored and it's very, very pale. Number five is our Sharpie, our sharp shinned hawk. And again, if you said Cooper's, I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> but uh, the cap there, it kind of is a gradient and the head is a little bit more rounded, whereas in the Cooper's that the line between the cap and the cheek is a bit more um, distinct. And then number six is our Swainson's hawk. So it's got that brown bib or hood and the really distinct contrast between the white and then the black of those flight feathers. All right. Oops. So I hope you all learned something new about raptors today and it wasn't too overwhelming, um, but thank you all so very much for joining me today. And again, um, I will be sending out an email in the next couple of days that will have a, a link to the recording as well as the PDF slides. And uh, it will be on our YouTube channel as well. So you can share it with your friends and family. Um, and with that, I'll be um, linking some really great resources too. So I saw someone mentioned Hawkwatch. Their website is phenomenal um, and some different like raptor specific field guides and things like that. Um, so thank you all so, so much. If you want to keep seeing things like this, make sure you keep an eye on our Facebook page and our website. Um, and if you are willing and able to make a donation, we would just appreciate it from the bottom of our hearts. We miss seeing everybody um, and, and your donations help us to keep doing webinars, but also to be able to hit the ground running when we are able to have in-person programs again. So thank you all, be safe, stay well, and we'll see you again soon.